So one more example here with multiple parts. In a, in a RLC circuit, a 200 ohm resistor, an 80 millihenry inductor, and a 5 microfarad capacitor are connected in series with an AC power source for which the peak voltage is 15 volts and frequency is 100 hertz. We want to calculate the maximum current, the average power dissipated by the resistor, the RMS voltage across the capacitor, the power factor, and the resonant frequency of this circuit in hertz. All right, so we have R, L, C, maximum source voltage, and frequency. Now, as you've hopefully seen in previous videos, examples, to find the current in a series RLC circuit, we need the source voltage and the impedance, Z. We've been given the source voltage. That 15 volts is applied to the entire circuit, not just the capacitor or just the resistor or just the inductor. So we do need to determine Z for this circuit, which we have our equation for the series circuit. Z is the square root of R squared plus the quantity of XL minus XC squared. I'm gonna find XL and XC individually just because I like to make sure I haven't made a mistake. All right, omega is 2 pi times the frequency, which we're told that's 100. And then we need to multiply by L, which is 80 millihenries, which I want to be in henries. So I'm getting 50.265 ohms. And I'm keeping a few decimal places so that I minimize rounding errors. XC for the capacitor is 1 over omega C. Omega 2 pi times frequency, so 2 pi times 100, and then C is 5 microfarads, so XC. I'm getting 318.31 ohms. R is 200, so we can plug these numbers in. The R is given in the problem, and we have now calculated XL and XC. I'm getting 334.44 ohms. Now that I have Z, I can come and plug that in. I know the peak voltage is 15 volts. I now have Z. So 15 divided by that is going to be 0 0.04485 amps. We have three sig figs. So for my answer, I'm going to go ahead and put 44.9 milliamps. 
for this maximum current. Since I put in a peak voltage, I'm getting a peak or maximum current. In the next steps, I am going to use this little bit longer digits of current just to minimize uh, rounding error. Average power dissipated. I'm going to go ahead and just do IRMS squared times R. I squared times R. I have the peak or maximum current though. To get IRMS, I need to take the maximum value over the square root of two. So this becomes one half of our max current squared times R. So one half times this point zero four four eight five, and then R is two hundred. So this power. Is point two zero one watts. So that's for B. For part C, the RMS voltage across a capacitor. If I look at the line with the for just the capacitor. I have this, the current, this would represent the peak current, would equal the peak voltage across the capacitor divided by X sub C. That means the peak voltage across the capacitor would be the peak current times X sub C. We want average value though we can go ahead and find the peak value and then divide by the square root of two. That's totally fine. So our peak current would be this IRLC we found times X sub C when we want the voltage for the capacitor specifically. So 14.276, this is peak though, because we used our peak current. RMS, we just need to take the peak value and divide by the square root of two. So that divided by the square root of two gives us 10.1 volts. That's the RMS voltage that the capacitor specifically will see. Now notice, by the way, the peak voltage, the capacitor, was not 15 volts. The 15 volts was the source. The capacitor will never see all 15 volts. And that's just the nature of having this AC source and having the inductors and capacitor and resistor. Okay, D. Power factor is cosine of phi. There's a couple ways to go about this. In the phasor diagram, not sure if they showed, I'm looking in the test notes. When we do the phasor diagram, for the RLC circuit, we did show that cosine phi was R, R over Z, but that's not in the test notes. But that's okay. It does show us in the test notes that the tangent of phi is the quantity of XL minus XC over R, and we have these. So we can totally take XL minus xc over r if i take the inverse tangent of both sides i'm 
I find that my phase angle is negative 53.2717. So I can totally find the angle. Now I can just come back and say cosine of this angle. is 0 0.598. This is the power factor. And by the way, if you happen to remember that the power factor is r over z, we get the same number. But I wanted to show you how to do it using the equations that are in the test notes. This particular relationship, r over z, is not in the test notes. And you don't need to memorize it. You can. But this power factor is essentially telling us that six, roughly 60% of the power that's being put into the circuit is actually being going out of the circuit, being used to create and turn to other forms of energy. All right, E. E wants to know the resonant frequency. Well, resonance occurs when omega is equal to 1 over the square root of LC. One side note. Notice I have not used this equation yet in the problem. Earlier, when I solved for XL and XC, I used the frequency given in the problem. That's always going to be the case. Use the frequency given in the problem unless it asks about resonant frequency or talks about maximizing power output or maximizing the current. Resonance occurs when omega is equal to 1 over the square root of LC since they're asking us for just frequency, not angular frequency, that means I want f. And omega is just 2 pi f. So f will be 1 over 2 pi times the square root of LC. L is... 80 millihenries, but we need to put that into henries. C is 5 microfarads. So plugging this in. getting 251.6 we have three sig figs so 252 hertz is the resonant frequency of this specific circuit that means if our source our power source if we can change the frequency up to this 252 instead of 100, then we will maximize the current output. If you recall, resonance means R equals Z, or Z equals R. The current would go from what we currently have at the 44.9 milliamps, if we change this to resonance, We would just take the source voltage over R, and we would have 75 milliamps as the peak current. So we maximize the current by putting a circuit in resonance. Please let me know if you have questions. So my students reach out by email or come to office hours. I'm happy to meet at times other than my office hours. You just have to schedule it.